You know, we don't have to personally experience the consequence of sins to know there's a consequence for sin. You, you don't have to have firsthand knowledge of some sins. You can look at other people that have committed that sin and learn from their example. And you can look and you can say, well, I, I see how that has messed up their life or messed up their marriage or messed up their family. I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't, I don't need to, to go through that myself to see how destructive that sin is. I, I can see what it's done to, to that person. And we can learn from their example. You know, when Saul was king over Israel, uh, David served Saul. He played music for Saul to soothe Saul's mind. But while David was serving Saul, David was also learning how not to be a king by watching Saul. Saul was an example to David of what not to do when you're the king over the nation. He learned from Saul's bad example. You know, uh, in Psalm 51, after David sinned with Bathsheba and he repented, he pins Psalm 51, and in Psalm 51, he says, Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Right, you guys know that? It's in, a, in an old uh, song that churches used to sing. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. He got that from watching Saul. Because David saw the Lord take the Holy Spirit away from Saul. When Saul sinned, and so he, he says in his prayer, please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me the way that you took it away from Saul. Don't do to me what you did to Saul. So he learned from Saul's bad example. So, so we can learn from others what, what not to do. And here God turns to Judah and he says, don't do what Israel's doing. Don't come up here to Israel. Don't copy them. See what's happening to them. Now we know Judah is going to, turn to idolatry as well and go down the same path as Israel, as the northern kingdom about 100 years later. He goes on to say in verse 16, we're almost finished. For Israel is stubborn, like a stubborn calf. Now the Lord will let them forage like a lamb in open country. He, he says Israel's stubborn. They, they rejected God. They, they rejected his commands. And so God says, oh, okay, have it your way. I'll leave you to yourself. I'll let you forage like a lamb in the open country. Now, let me ask you a question. What happens to a lamb that is left alone in the open country? It becomes dinner for some animal, right? It becomes lamb chops for wild E. coyote is what's going to happen to a lamb, right? That's what will happen to Israel. That's what will happen to Israel. They're going to be wiped out, picked off by the Assyrians. I think one of the so most sobering things you find in the Bible, you find it in the New Testament, in the Gospels with Jesus as well, is you know a person can, can resist God and resist God and reject God and reject God and push God away and push God away. And there's a point where God says, okay, if that's what you want. And, and he'll just kind of leave us to ourselves, right? Like a lamb in the open country. Okay, you, you want to go figure it out on your own? You can go figure it out on your own. Remember when Jesus goes across the Sea of Galilee to Gadara and he uh, casts the demons out of the man, the demon-possessed man of Gadara, right? And the man, it says he was clothed and seated and in his right mind. That's what Jesus does for a person. But the people of that area, they came to Jesus and they asked him to leave. Because he ruined their pig business. So they asked him to leave and it says that Jesus got in the boat and he left. That's sobering. And, and here the people have, of Israel have just, have just pushed God away to the point that, that God says, oh, okay, I'll leave you to yourself. I'll let you forage like a lamb in the open country. And so verse 17. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Ephraim is another name for the northern kingdom. Ephraim was the largest of the ten tribes that made up the northern kingdom. But here God, God says. Just let, let him alone. 
They want to be left alone. Leave them alone. Again, this is part of God's judgment upon the nation. God, God pulls back from that nation. And he leaves them alone. And we, we don't want God to leave us alone as a nation. We don't want God to leave us alone individually. We need the Lord's protection. We need the Lord's provision. We need the Lord to be our good shepherd. But there is this point now that they've reached as a nation where God says, okay, I'll just leave them alone. Verse 18, their drink is rebellion. What's your favorite drink? Rebellion. Can I get you something to drink? How about a glass of rebellion? They commit harlotry just, just continually. Her rulers, they dearly love Dishonor the, the rulers, the politicians. They dearly love dishonor, that means they, they dearly love shameful practices. <laughs> the leaders are corrupt. Again, this is the, they're on they're in the fast lane heading towards judgment. Micah 7 3 says the officials and judges take bribes. Listen to this. The, the officials and judges of the nation take bribes. The people with influence, they get what they want. And they twist justice to benefit themselves. Solomon was right. There's nothing new under the sun. Man hasn't changed at all. So the wind has wrapped her up in its wings. There's no turning back now. They shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices.